فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم وجمل بنصح الخلق قلبك إنه لعلى جمال لعلى جمال للقلوب وأجود Beautify your heart by making it sincere towards others as that is the finest, most superb adornment for all hearts. The author says, وَجَمِّلْ بِنُصْحِ Beautify yourself and adorn yourself. Always. In being a sincere advisor to the creation. Sincere. A person is required from him and يَكُونَ دَائِمًا نَاصِحًا لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ that he is consistently a sincere advisor to the people and not deceive, deceptive. When you see your Muslim brothers and sisters going wrong in a matter that you sincerely advise them, you are not deceptive that you watch them do their crimes and their mistakes. Nasiha is the opposite of what? al ghishu deception. Walidalika, the word nushi linguistically originally means when you clean the honey from all of that which are in it. It's when you make the milk pure, clean. And that's why the Messenger والسلام, he said, A deen nasiha that the religion is based on it is sincerity, it's sincere advice. The religion is sincere advice. Qala, the Prophet then said, Lillahi. So the companions asked, Qulna liman, who is it sincere advice for? Then the messenger said, Lillahi, wa li kitabihi, wa li rasulihi, wa li a'immati al-muslimina wa ammatihim. And if you look at all of those, the advice is done in its way. The advice to the Qur'an is in one way. The advice to Allah is in another way. The advice... To the messenger is in another way. The one for the believing leader, the Muslim leader, is in a way. The advice to the people is in a way. You don't mix one with the other. The reason why I say this is because some people, they understand advice and they conflate advice with and contradict advice with what is known as shaming a person. And when Ibn Rajab saw this consistently occurring at his time, people not being able to tell the difference between one another, he wrote a book called Al-Farqu Bayn Al-Nasihati wa Ta'eer. The difference between advising somebody and shaming somebody. And Imam Al-Shafi'i said, in a lines of poetry which I don't remember now, he said, anyone who advises me privately I take it. And anyone who advises me out in the open, I become rebellious. The Imam, a Shafi'i, to go and expose a person's mistakes in public by talking to him in front of his friends, Methelen, or in front of a crowd of people. And then once you walk away, you say, I gave him the advice that I should have given him. He's just stubborn, he doesn't want to listen will say this is not advice. Just like drugs is not food, and alcohol, I mean, I mean, riba is not interest. The name can be nice. You can give it a fancy name by calling it advice. But what you truly did is you shamed him. They'll say to you sometimes, I've been advising this person for the last 10 years. Now what you've been doing is you've been shaming this person. The prophets were the ones who were sincere advisors to their people. They would sit with their people. They would advise their people. They would give them alternatives. They would give them solutions. And they wouldn't give up on them. And when their nations wouldn't listen, they would say to them, فَتَوَلَّى عَنْهُمْ وَقَالَ يَا قَوْمِ لَقَدْ أَبْلَغْتُكُمْ رِسَالَةَ رَبِّي وَنَصَحْتُ لَكُمْ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُحِبُّونَ النَّاصِحِينَ They would turn away from their nation and their people and say to them, 
I have conveyed a message that was upon me regarding this affair and advised you. But you guys are a people who don't like advice. You don't like a person who has sincere advice for you. A person who is a sincere advisor shows consideration and concern. He's merciful to the young one when he speaks to him. He respects and he honors the elder one when he's speaking to him. He finds sorrow and concern in his heart towards those people who he's concerned for. He's happy with their happiness. He really loves their, their betterment, them becoming better and their good. That's what he wants. He likes when they are united and they're together. He likes when their, un when their ni'mah and their blessings is there. He likes when they're victorious over their enemies. He likes harm to be taken away from them and not to be brought to them. All of that. That's a person who's a sincere advisor. I advise you to go to this hadith, Ad-Deenu Al-Nasiha. قُلْنَا لِمَنْ قَالَ لِلَّهِ وَلِكِتَابِهِ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِأَئِمَّةِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَعَامَّتِهِمْ And I advise you to look at the book written by Ibn Rajab Al-Hanbali called Jami'ul Ulum Wal-Hikam when he explains it there. And also his other book which I mentioned, Al-Farqu Bayna Al-Nasihati Wal-Ta'ir The difference between advice and shaming somebody. And exposing them. What's the difference between the two? That's a book that deserves to be read. Not only just read, but also taught <coughs> to the youngsters and the youths. Because a lot of the time it's them that come around saying, I had been advising this person, I advised this person. But they haven't understood the reality and the true meaning of advice. Sometimes a person does not take the advice, not because they are hard headed and they are stubborn and in a state of denial. Is because the way you convey the message to them and the way you have told them this was a way which they had, they did not want to take. And I said, if Shafi'i said that, what do you think of other Shafi'i? Then the author goes on to say, and before I move on, what is important as well is that try to read what it means when advising the Muslim leader. That itself has been explained by the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. Read the narrations that explain it. Don't just read this hadith and then say, I'm going to apply it the way I want to. So I'm going to criticize the Muslim leader on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. <coughs> like the Muslim leader is not like a like the Muslim leader is not a Muslim whose blood, sorry, and his honor and his dignity is sacred. Just like any Muslim can be, cannot be backbited, the Muslim leader can't be backbited. He has the rights that the Muslims have. And the way you advise him has been told to us by the Messenger So you have to read and go into مُعَامَلَةُ حُكَامِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ How to deal with the Muslim leader. And how to speak to, how to advise him. Then the author goes into, on to saying إِنَّهُ لَأَعْلَى إِنَّهُ لَأَعْلَى جَمَالٍ لِلْقُلُوبِ وَأَجْوَدُ Sincere advice to the creation and being far from one who is deceptive is considered as a beauty of the heart and is an adornment of the heart. Rather it is from the greatest things. Rather it is from the greatest things that a person can adore himself with and he can beautify himself with is to be sincere in advice and to be far from the opposite which is deception because one of the greatest illnesses one of the greatest illnesses for somebody to have in their heart is deception and it is from the greatest things that place darkness and Filth into the hearts of the people. And it goes against the ayah. The day when the person comes to Allah with a clean heart. Heart from what? Afat. Illnesses. Amrad al qulub The illnesses of the heart. Marad al-shubuhat. Marad al-shahawat. 
And it's funny because uh, before that, what did Allah say? يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بنون. How about if you're deceiving the people because you want to gain wealth? You're doing it because of your children, for example. Or even your personal honor. You're coming with deception. And you're forgetting the other part, which is إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Coming with Allah, the heart is clean. وَلِذَلِكَ The people of Jannah don't enter Jannah unless their heart are clean. What does Allah say in the Quran? When the ma fi sudurihim min ghillin ikhwanin ala sururin mutaqabilin. The qantarah is the place where they come. That's where the people stay. Once they reach the qantarah, it means they're going to go Jannah. That's why we say, Jawaz al qantarah. They pass the qantarah, meaning Jannah is all that awaits them. That's after the sirat, after everything. They are stopped here. When they're stopped here, what is done is that their hearts are cleaned. Everyone is like, at min al What do you have for your brother against? What do you have against him? Ya Rabbi, he did this, this. Your hearts are cleaned. Nothing left for each other. Are you happy now? Naam. Enter Jannah. And everyone go now. So the hearts are made clean. Because that heart who's cleansed can only enter Jannah. This place is a pure place and it's a clean place. Cleansiness and purity is what's needed. Then the author goes on to say وصاحب إذا صاحبت كل موفق يقود يقودك للخير يقودك للخيرات نصحا ويرشد When accompanying others choose every guided individual who would lead you to all good things to all things good sincerely and direct you <coughs> The Sheikh now says, وصاحب إذا صاحبت كل موفق Strive in electing, choosing, selecting a friend. Selection of a friend. You choose your friend. Have Pick your friends. Huh? When you go to shops and you want to buy juices and they're nice juices. Yeah? Apple juices. What do they tell you? These apples were handpicked. So, huh? Meaning they're not they're not rotten or anything. They're made for apples that were checked, looked at. Then it was ah. That's what they say. It depends on what I was looking at, right? But that's how it is when it comes to your friends. You handpick them. You look at this person and you say, Hey, the reason you handpick them is because your friend is a reflection of you. What did I what did the poet said? لا تسأل عنه واسأل قرينه. Don't ask about him. Ask about his friend. فإن القرين بالمقارن يقتدي. Because everyone follows the other one. He's there. And the messenger said this way before. What did he say? المرء على دين خليله فلينظر أحدكم من يخالل. That the person is of the religion of his friend. So look at who you take as a a friend, a close friend. So the believer shouldn't just walk with every single body. But it's important and it's obligatory and it's necessary for him to choose a righteous, obedient slave of Allah as a friend and to hang around with that person. For example, the person has muhafadat ala salawat. His prayer, he's consistent upon it. And he works hard on his prayer. We leave his private affairs with Allah. We, that's not something we can judge him by, can we? That doesn't mean when you're choosing your friend and you're unpicking him. Place a CCTV in his house, you know, record his conversations and he, go into his life, yeah? Break into his emails and his phone because you want to hang around with this person. La. You leave his private affairs with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what we look at is the amarat al-zahira, the apparent signs that a person has, which is al-muhafadat ala salah. He makes sure that he looks after his prayers. We make sure that he's a person who does as Allah commands him to do, stays away from that which Allah prohibits him from subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you find a person like that, then you should befriend them. But if you take any individual as a friend, 
Then remember, a sahib sahib, a friend, is one who's going to drag you. That's what they say. Sahib is a sahib. He's going to drag you. Drag you to what he is. What is that? A believing male, righteous believing man should not marry a woman who's a fajr. And a, a imra'atun saliha, a righteous woman, fearful of Allah, should not marry a man who is fasiq, fajr. Even if her parents are telling her to marry him, she, can, she doesn't obey her parents in this. And there's nothing upon her. But if her parents are forcing her to get married to a guy who's haliqul lihya, does not pray the salah, you see, but because he's a family member or he's a close family, yeah, she marries, then she doesn't obey her parents in this. She goes against her command. Says la. The reason is because the friend that you hang around with, if he hasn't got the decency of becoming conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fear, fearing Allah, doing as Allah commanded him, staying away from that which Allah prohibited him from. And he's forsaken all of that. He's dismissing all of that. He is exceeding his limits. He's transgressing on Allah's boundaries. Then why do you not believe that he could do the same to you? That he's going to deceive you? That he's going to oppress you? That he's going to exceed, transgress on... He's done it to Allah, Khaliq al-Samawati wal ard he did it to his own creator, his sustainer, his provider, who's still providing for him, who's running his affairs. He's done that to him. You miskeen who haven't done anything for him. Yeah. The same is with the wife or the husband. If your wife has exceeded her limits and her boundaries in Allah's religion, and she's going against the deen of Allah, and she has made this her norms, then why do you sit around and wait for her to remember you? فَمَنْ ضَيَّعَ حَقَّ اللَّهِ Anyone who has forsaken the rights of Allah فَلِمَا سِوَهُ أَضْيَعَ He's going to forsake everything else. And he's going to transgress and oppress everything else. So that's why you always need to look at a person you want to become friends with. A wife that you want to take as a wife. A sister wants to take a man as a husband. The relationship between this person and Allah. You know why? Because the person who has a relationship with Allah is by default, insha'Allah ta'ala, going to have a good relationship with you. It's not going to give you a hard time and stress you out. And it's also not going to what? It's also not going to push you to that which is wrong. And that's what the Prophet told us. The Prophet told us والسلام, that effect companionship can have on a person. He told us والسلام, the famous hadith which we all know. مَثَلُ الْجَلِيسِ الصَّالِحِ وَالْجَلِيسِ السُّوءِ كَحَامِ الْمِسْكِ وَنَافِخِ الْخِيرِ The Messenger said, the likes of the gathering, the righteous gathering, the good gathering is like a good gathering. Good companionship is like one who owns a pure perfume shop and a blacksmith. That's the difference. You go to a perfume shop. If you go to the perfume shop, just by sitting there, what's going to happen? Nice fragrance. Smells nice. Don't get anything. He might not give you anything. You may not leave with anything. But just whilst you're sitting there and you're in that gathering, the smell that your nose takes in is enjoyable, right? Different smells and nice. You're not in an in uncomfortable place. It smells bad. It just doesn't. What's the chances of a perfume rubbing off on you or him putting perfume on for you or saying, look, this is a gift from me to you. Take this and... In other words, when you leave that gathering, you're going to leave with good, whatever the case may be, one way or another. Even if it doesn't give you anything, you walk out, you've left with a nice moment of time where it smelled nice. 
that's like the gathering of the righteous people. You sit in their lessons, in their halaqa, their circles, you benefit. The iman increases, you learn things. One way or another. Something might come out of his mouth that you didn't know. You learn. Also, he might give you something. And say, look, akhi, subhanAllah, I've got an extra copy of a book. It's, this is yours. I'm going to give it to you. Keep it. You see? Or he might say, subhanAllah, I know somebody that can benefit you in this issue. Who? You want to learn the Quran? Ha. Ah, I know somebody who can teach you. Ha, learn. Yet, so and so is going to come to you, brother, take him on. Can you teach him? Nah. Through him. You got to what? Wasila, right? So he's connected you to a person. You've now gone and received teachings from somebody who, he, his recommendation you can get that way. Look how many fawaid and khayr that you get through this person. A lot of things open up for you, through them. Khayr, ta'at open for you. Have you seen righteous people always tend to find, they go to a country, you look at two people. One person says, I went to that country, subhanAllah, there's fisk and fasad, man. Another one says, subhanAllah, knowledge is there. Ta'at. But tabi'ah is like that. Each one was looking for something. And everyone found what they were looking for. This one, this one who's, he only sees, he only looks for the khair. He only approaches the khair. And that's where he always finds. He'll say, yeah, Alim Fulan is there, so and so is there, and the Talib Fulan is there, and that Markaz is there, is Mel, mashallah, and he'll tell you that. Another one will tell you this club is there, this pub is there, this strip uh, place is there, and this and this, he knows all those places. But they all landed the same day, they were on the same flight together. How does this one know this one? The duration that they were there together was the same. It's because each person's nature and what they are is what they find. And a righteous person always pushes you to that which his nature is. Now, if you go to a blacksmith, which is like the gathering of a bad gathering, bad companionship, the blacksmith who's blowing into fire, if he doesn't do anything to your garment, he doesn't take your garment or whatever, the fact that you're there, how bad is it for your lungs? The smoke that you're taking in and you're inhaling, the smell of the place, the heat, that, the sweat that you unnecessarily... You've just, you just had a shower. Unnecessarily, now you're becoming, you're sweating because of the heat. Okay? Um, that's like the gathering that's evil. If Worst case scenario, you could burn off your clothes. Ashes could fall onto your clothes. Your foot can taint your clothes. That is like the Prophet told us, the gathering which is good. When the Prophet said, إِمَّا أَنْ يُحْذِيَكَ so the friend is going to affect you Wallahi, one way or another he's going to affect you a person who befriends a student of knowledge he finds himself using the word يعني common it comes very huh? يعني, يعني, يعني. even if he's a gangster on the streets, when he goes to his friends, yeah, and they ask him if he asked for the drug money, and they say, Ya'ani is five pounds. Huh? Why is he using Ya'ani on drugs? Naam. It's a situation I know, my brother, who's like that. <laughs> Where did he come from? Where did he get the Ya'ani from when he's selling drugs? He spent just that time he spent, spent with students of knowledge. If he carried on, he would have left the evil that he's in. It's going to affect you. Just like the evil friends going to affect you. Bad things that you once used to see evil, you now started to see it what? Fine, nothing's wrong with it. So if the matter is like that, what is upon every person who is sincere to himself, who is concerned for himself, is to watch who you hang around with and who you befriend. The ones who stopped Abu Talib from entering into Islam and becoming a believer was Utbah ibn Rabi'ah, Abu Jahl and the likes of them. Friends. They prevented him from it. They stopped him. And because of that, Abu Talib died as a disbeliever. They stopped him from it. And prevented him from it. 
So look at who you take as a friend and who you hang around with. If your friend can't do anything for you in this world that you're living today, he can't even help you. You get killed, he'll run away. Gangs come, rifle, like two rival groups and fighting. And he's going to leave you there to get shanked, eh? to get stabbed. And he's going to watch that happen to you. And leave you for dead. They will, and maybe even not talk to the police about it. Because he's scared that he might have to snitch on some people or methyl. Or even if something happens and a crime is done, they all gang up on you, the guys that you were with, and they all snitch on you and say you were the one behind it. If they're like that to you in this world, then what are they going to be for you the hereafter? Are they going to really help you? They couldn't even do that for you in this world. You couldn't take a part of the sentence with you. Have you not seen sometimes, uh, police, they take one person, put him in a room, and, they'll, and they take another one, and they say, oh, your friend snitched on you. So, he snitched on you, so he thinks his friend snitched, so he starts snitching on his friend, and his friend, but this one didn't, maybe, at the beginning. The reason why they believe that can happen is because evil free people are like that towards each other. An evil person knows that the other person is like that. Subhanallah, circum stories like uh, people on the streets, one boy takes another boy's girlfriend away from him. He's your best, his best friend. Sadiquhu. Very close to him. He takes his girlfriend away from him. That was your best friend. He just took your girlfriend. The asl and haram. But then you still say he's my best friend, he's my best friend. You still find a pale or call for him. Those complications, no problem. Huh? This is the humqa, the, the way shaitan has fooled. So the sheikh's statement here right now is وصاحب إذا صاحبت كل موفقين. If you befriend someone, befriend a righteous person. يقودك he will direct you and he will take you towards للخيرات the good. نصحا ويرشد he will advise you and will change the way you look at things and how you see things. That's what a good friend is about. We'll stop there inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanaka Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.